Hi guys, welcome to English Cafe and I'm Mamta. Okay, so Raj is live. Saru Buyan, Dorj is live. Hi guys, welcome to the session. Thank you for joining us this evening. Hi Raj, I'm doing great. How are you? Hi Vinod, welcome to the session. All right, guys, so before other people join us for the live session today, let us talk about the topic. The topic for today's live workshop is pronunciation, as pronunciation is one very important aspect of speaking a language. And it's important that we pronounce the words, the sounds right in any given language that we speak. And before we begin with the session on pronunciation today, I would like to thank all you students who have helped us move to online training so seamlessly and have so quickly adopted to it. And let me tell you that all of us at English Cafe are working very, very hard to ensure a really pleasant learning experience for you and I hope you're enjoying your online classes these days. So thank you so much for helping and supporting us there. We'll keep working hard and we'll keep improving so that we can keep offering you great quality learning here at English Cafe. And uh, now moving on to today's topic, as you know, the topic is pronunciation. So let's talk about why we need to learn pronunciation or why we need to neutralize our pronunciation. So I would like to talk about, uh, I would like to give you an example. We all have heard uh, Mrs. Gandhi speaking Hindi. Uh, Mrs. Indra, Mrs. Uh, Sonia Gandhi speaking Hindi. And we really find it very funny when she mispronounces the words or if you heard Donald Trump speaking recently about India uh, when he was in India and when he mispronounced certain Hindi words we did not feel very nice about it so the same goes with everyone and English being an important language for us uh, as it is the language of business everywhere in the world this one language connects us with people across the world and since we're going to use it a lot in our lives in our professional life and in our social life as well so it's important that we neutralize our pronunciation for English and when we say pronunciation there are two things to it one is the sounds we need to know all the sounds correctly we should be able to produce all the English sounds correctly and then comes the pronunciation for words. It's also equally important that we neutralize our pronunciation for English words. And by neutralize, I mean if we can pronounce like native speakers and uh, we can either follow a British pronunciation or an American pronunciation. Uh, whatever is suitable to us. But since uh, in our country we are so influenced by uh, the American culture and American movies, so we, we follow a lot of American uh, pronunciation these days, but uh, you can follow any pronunciation that suits you. So here in this session today, what we are going to talk about is, uh, we'll discuss uh, what's the difference between Hindi and English and uh, in terms of pronunciation. Then we will talk about uh, syllable and syllable stress. What is syllable and syllable stress? And uh, 
Then uh, we will also talk about how we can neutralize our pronunciation in English. And uh, after that, uh, we will also discuss pronunciation, the correct pronunciation for different words in English so that you guys can practice along. And let me go online now. Hi, Kunal. Good evening. Hi, Ruby. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Sanjeet. Good evening. I hope you guys are able to listen to me. If there is any problem with the audio or the video, please let me know so that we can fix it now before we start. Hi, Ravi Swaroop. Welcome to the session. Good evening, Sanjeev. Guys, please let me know if you can hear me clearly, if I'm audible to you. So that I'm confident that whatever I'm speaking, you're getting it. And if I'm too fast or too slow, please let me know as well. And I hope you're able to understand my pronunciation. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Good evening, Lokesh. Thank you for joining. Chakraborty Dada. Hi. Welcome to the session. Hi, Sanjeev. Okay, there's no problem. That's great. Okay. Good to know that you guys can listen to me. And uh, before we talk about pronunciation for different words, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So as you know me as uh, the trainer at English Cafe, I've been training for six years now. Whereas I was not always a trainer in English. In fact, I learned English as my third language because I grew up in a uh, in very interior part of Uttarakhand where we spoke Gadwali, that was my first language and then as I went to schools I started learning Hindi that was my second language and then when I grew up and uh, started looking for jobs that's when I actually started thinking of English as a language of communication and that's when I started learning English which was pretty much after I was an adult. So it was difficult for me as well. Like many of you might feel that, oh, I'm already very old and I'm learning English now. Will I ever be able to neutralize pronunciation or will I be able to get fluent? So that's why I want to tell you that I also learned this language as an adult and I've been practicing it for so many years now. and. Uh, as you know me as the trainer and many of my students say that uh, I'm a good trainer and they appreciate my um, training skills. So I've been able to achieve this and I'm sure each one of you can achieve fluency in the language, confidence in the language. You can improve your pronunciation. The only thing you need to do is you need to practice it religiously and regularly. Any language that you practice regularly you can become fluent it, at it, even as an adult. So you have me as an example. So guys, please, and when I say practice, what I want to say is you need to practice all four skills of the language. You don't need to bother too much about grammar, though you need to speak correct English so that people can understand you, but you don't need to Put all your emphasis on grammar. That's really not required, or at least that's what I think. And uh, But what you need to do is you need to practice all four language skills, which are listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Two of these are receptive skills. Listening and reading are receptive skills. And writing and speaking are productive skills. You need to practice all four skills on a regular basis in order to become a proficient 
level user in English language and here we're talking about speaking so even to become fluent at speaking you need to practice all other skills as well so that you can generate your thoughts in English and when you can think in English you become fluent in it when you can think in a language you become fluent in it so I hope you guys will follow that and uh, oh, gradually move towards fluency in English and when we when we're talking about fluency pronunciation also becomes very very important because when we are speaking we are speaking for the other person and in today's world we interact with people from everywhere in the world like not just our country but everywhere in the world and when we are talking with people when we are interacting with people who are not familiar with our ways of speaking then if our pronunciation is not neutral we will have difficult times interacting with such people. Our conversation or whatever communication we're going to have will not be smooth because they can't understand what we say. That's why it becomes really important that we work on our pronunciation and we neutralize it. Let me just check who all are online now. Okay, so we have Diksha. Hi Diksha, welcome to the session. Hi Kunal. So many people are joining us. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. So we were talking about uh, the importance of pronunciation. So if we want to have a smooth interaction, a nice interaction, it's important that we pronounce the words right, that we pronounce the sounds right. Otherwise, we will be asked to repeat. Uh, people will have difficulty understanding us. And... Uh, it will go really unpleasant and that's not something we want. We really want to have a nice, pleasant, smooth interaction with the other people when we are speaking. So that's why you got to work on your pronunciation and you got to neutralize it. And let me tell you guys, I still make many pronunciation mistakes, but I'm learning. I've been learning for many, many years, trying to neutralize it. And uh, at this point, uh, I'm able to have conversations pleasantly without uh, too much of uh, uh, problems, even if I'm talking to people who are not from the country, who are uh, from different parts of the world. So I can very, very comfortably communicate with them and they don't have difficulty understanding me because I've been able to neutralize my pronunciation and work on other aspects of my language. So today, as we're going to talk about pronunciation, and as most of us speak Hindi, I would like to talk to you guys about how, what is different between Hindi and English in terms of pronunciation. If we talk about Hindi, Hindi is a phonetic language. What I mean by that is, in Hindi, each letter is a distinct sound and in Hindi one letter means one sound like a uh, always remains a uh. it doesn't make any other sound in Hindi for example k always remains k it it's never it is never silent or it does not produce any other sound it never goes that way in Hindi so Hindi is a very very uh, uh, systematic or scientific that way where each letter each letter is a distinct sound in itself so if you know the letter you already know the sound so every time you come across that letter you read it you speak it the same way the sound never changes so it's a phonetic language whereas English is a non phonetic language and when I say it's a non phonetic language what we mean is that in English Though we have only 26 letters from A to Z, the, the alphabet has only 26 letters. There are 48 sounds that we make from these 26 letters. And how, how do we make these sounds? We make these sounds by using the same letter to produce multiple sounds. Like A can sound A, it can sound A, it can sound A, it can sound A. In different words like a double p l e apple so it's a c a r car so it's a similarly you can make different sounds 
using just one letter. Similarly, if we talk about the consonant sounds in English, so talking about C, C produces K sound, C also produces CH sound. So it's a non phonetic language. So what happens in English is that's the basic difference between Hindi and English. In Hindi, if you it is spoken in the same way as it is written. So if you know the alphabet, you know exactly how to speak it. But that's not how it works with English. In English, it is written in a different way and it may look like something else, but it is the pronunciation can be very different. And we can never be sure unless we actually check the pronunciation. So that's my first advice to you as a trainer and as a learner of the language as well that whenever you come across any new word in English, do not try to make up the pronunciation. Do not try to uh, put the sounds together and uh, make the pronunciation because more often than not, you will turn out to be wrong. You will always make up an incorrect pronunciation and then later on you will have difficulty improving it or changing it to different one. So whenever you come across a new word, always check the pronunciation. You can learn certain rules, etc. So talking about rules, you can learn certain rules, but you can never be sure. And uh, there are not many rules actually. So the best strategy is check out the pronunciation and you know, what I do is I always check the pronunciation online on Cambridge Dictionary. So Cambridge have their website, Cambridge Dictionary has their website. I go to their website and uh, I type the word and I listen to the pronunciation. Anytime I come across a new word, I type the word there on Cambridge Dictionary and I always listen to the pronunciation. I listen to British as well as American pronunciation and I follow the pronunciation that suits me more. Because we Indians have certain patterns of pronouncing. Uh, sometimes the American sounds, American pronunciation seems more comfortable, I follow that. Some other times the British pronunciation, I, I feel that's more comfortable, so I follow that. You can follow the same if you like to. But please always check on the website and I trust Cambridge because English originates from there. And, uh, if, uh, and the native uh, uh, people, the natives record the sounds so we can trust them for uh, the neutrality of the sounds of the pronunciation. That's why I follow Cambridge English, uh, Cambridge Dictionary. That's what you guys can also do. So that was about what's the difference between Hindi and English in terms of sounds and pronunciation. All right, so we have more people live. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining. Hi Ishika, welcome to the session. I hope you're doing well. And guys, I really hope all of you are doing well and staying indoors and following the lockdown because it's very, very important that we keep ourselves and our families and the other human, fellow humans safe. So please stay indoors. Please follow all the guidelines and advisory that is being issued by the health ministry, by the government, so that we can ensure the safety for each one of us and for the entire nation. All right, Asar. Hi, Asar. Thank you so much for joining. Glad to see you here. I hope you're doing well. And I hope, guys, all of the people in your family are doing well, are safe, and you are indoors. And let's also hope and pray that uh, this uh, pandemic gets over and uh, we all can get back to our day-to-day -day lives and meet each other. So let's hope that. Hi, Deeksha. Hello, Sanjay. Thank you so much, guys. Hi, Udghosh. Welcome to the session. Please stay with us. Thank you so much for joining, guys. So that was about syllable, syllable stress and what to do when you come across a new word. That is to check for the pronunciation in the dictionary. Do not make up the pronunciation. More often than not, you will be wrong and you don't want that. So please always check. Now, um, 
we know what we are going to do is since I want to make this uh, a useful session for you, I would like to discuss the pronunciation for different words with you guys so that you can practice along, we can practice along and uh, uh, if you want to make some notes, you can make notes also if you have a pen and a notebook, you can, uh, you can use that. And you can also watch this video later because it's going to be live here on Facebook. Uh, I mean, it's going to stay here on Facebook after the workshop. So if you want, you can, uh, um, you can watch it later as well and uh, work on your pronunciation. And uh, I really hope that uh, you guys find this session useful and make the most out of it. So uh, first of all, I would like to discuss with you guys the days of the week because uh, I have come across many students who mispronounce the days of the weeks. So I'm going to pronounce the days for you. And if you mispronounce any of these words, uh, you can correct that. You can learn the correct pronunciation. So the first day is Monday. Monday, everybody pronounces right. Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This one, many people get incorrect. Many people say Wednesday, it's not Wednesday, it's Wednesday, Wednesday, like the D is almost not there when you speak it. So it's Wednesday, then Thursday, 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 Friday, Saturday. This one, many people get it wrong, like we've been calling it Saturday, it's not Saturday, it's Saturday. Saturday, like Saturday, Saturday, there's a song, so you can watch that, Saturday. And then the Sunday. So I repeat, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Please practice. Next, I would like to talk to you about months. The names of months because uh, many people, many of us mispronounce the names of the months also. So we have to try to pronounce in English. So in Hindi, say we say January, but it's not January, right? The pronunciation in English is January, 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 February, March, April, it's not April, April, May, June, July, August, not August, August, and it's not August, it's August, August, September, October, November, December. It's not November, December, it's November and December. I'll repeat the names for you guys. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. You can repeat after me when I speak so that you can practice as well because I would like it to be useful for you. So to practice, you can repeat so that uh, you can also get it correct. So after days and months, I would like to talk to you about continents. Like our earth has these seven continents and uh, many of us mispronounce the names of these continents. Like many of us mispronounce the name of our own continent. So we don't live in Asia. Asia is okay if we are talking in Hindi, but if you're speaking in English, it's not Asia, it's Asia. So you have to make the Z sound, Z, not the Sh sound. So it's Asia, Asia, Asia. The world calls our continent Asia. And India is in Southeast Asia. Southeast? Yes, I guess. We are in Southeast Asia, Asia. Next one, Europe, that's not Europe, it's Europe, 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 Europe. Next one, Australia, Australia, Australia. Then we have America, we have two continents there, North America and South America. I would like to tell you one thing here that uh, it's not America as such, there is no R at the end. It's just a. Uh. Uh, in English, they call it the schwa sound. So it's just a uh at the end. It's not America. It's America. 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 That's it. America. America. But we've been calling it America. 
Africa also, no, because we, it's not very prominent, but that's okay. America, Africa, Antarctica, not Africa, Africa, it's not Africa, Africa. So I'm going to repeat the names of these continents again. The first one, you can repeat after me. The first one is Asia, Asia, Europe, Europe. Australia, Australia, America, America, Africa, Africa, Antarctica, Antarctica. So that's how you're going to pronounce the names of the continents now onwards. We have Pavan Gaur and Satish Chandra online. Hi guys, welcome to the session. Please stay with us. Hi Aditya. And I hope I'm audible to you guys. Yeah, India is in South Asia. Okay, sure. Thank you, Chakraborty Radha, for that information. So these were the names of the continents that we have. And there are so many uh, other things that we mispronounce. So the best thing is, you know, how, how I neutralized my pronunciation is uh, by listening to native speakers and listening to people who speak neutral English. For example, I listen to people like Indra Nui or Satya Nadella or Sundar Pichai or Sashi Tharoor or uh, global leaders like Barack Obama or uh, uh, celebrities like Priyanka Chopra because when these guys speak and they have traveled across the world and uh, uh, lived in the English speaking nations, these people speak really neutral English. And when we say neutral, we are not trying to get an American or a British or an Australian accent. I think the world is okay with our accent. Nobody has problems with us Indians speaking in an Indian accent. I believe the world is really cool with it. Whereas we just need to neutralize the pronunciation. If you listen to these people like Satya Nadella or Indira Nui, you will see that uh, they don't speak uh, like Native Americans, but they speak really neutral and it's very easy to understand them. So you can also follow these people, follow how they pronounce words, how they uh, modulate their voice, etc. And you can just emulate them. And yes, which brings me to one more point, guys. So language learning doesn't require a lot of intelligence. Why? Because all of us speak language. Each one of us speaks our language. And uh, uh, many of us are not very intelligent people. Uh, I'm not sure, at least I can't say that about myself, but I can speak my native language, that's Garwali, that, uh, then I can speak Hindi and I can speak English. And I know a little bit of Sanskrit also. So. How we have been, how we are able to learn languages is only through emulation. Emulation means by copying. We just have to copy the other people. And if we copy people who speak good language, we will learn good language. So uh, you don't need to, you need, don't need to copy somebody who speaks foul language or uh, who speaks bad Hindi, for example, if you're learning Hindi. You need to copy someone who speaks well, who speaks, uh, uh, you know, who speaks nicely. So same way with learning English, you need to copy people who speak well, whose, whose pronunciation is neutral, so that you can copy those people and learn from them. At least that's how I have been learning uh, ever since I started learning English. So please, guys, please follow that. Please follow good speakers, speakers who speak well, so that you can learn um, the skills. So guys, uh, yeah, and there's one more thing that I would like to tell you guys that uh, we have recently started our online classes also. So uh, if, you, if you want to improve or work on your English language skills or if you know someone who needs help with their English, please let them know about English Cafe and uh, uh, they can join our online. These are live online classes where the classes are conducted uh, every day between Monday to Friday and these are two hour classes so they can join us. You can let them know. And we are also offering many discounts in the courses at the moment. So please let them know. It'll be a great help. 
So now getting back to our topic pronunciation, we discuss days, months, continents and uh, now let's discuss some more words. So I have made a list of words which I'm going to discuss with you which we mispronounce. First of all, I'm going to discuss with you the words related to English learning which I've seen people mispronouncing. So I'll tell you how to pronounce them right. So I've got these words. I'll discuss them with you one by one. I hope you can see this. Uh, if you find it difficult to see this, you can let me know. Hi Upasna, Upasna is with us. Thank you for joining. So this first word, uh, many of my students call it vocabulary, but it's not vocabulary, it's vocabulary. Vocabulary. And before we talk about more words, I would like to talk to you people about syllable and syllable stress. So what happens in English words is that we can break the words down with the help of the vowels in them. So we can break them down in the smallest sound. Like if we take a look at this word, this is how we can break it down. We have vo, then we have ka, then we have bu, then we have le, then we have re. So wherever there is a vowel sound, we, we break it down and that's how these and this one unit which is inseparable now is called syllable. For example, vo is a syllable, ka is a syllable, bu is a syllable, le is a syllable and re is a syllable. So if we put it all together, it becomes vocabulary. Vocabulary. So the word is vocabulary. Vocabulary. So we just talked about syllables. Vocabulary, vocabulary. There's one more thing you need to pay attention to is that English also has the concept of syllable stress. So we just talked about syllables, these units, these smallest units like vo is a syllable. Now in English, there is the concept of syllable stress. What that means is that certain syllables are stressed more whereas certain syllables are not stressed in a particular word or in particular words in English. For example, if we take a look at this word and we say vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary. So can you tell me where the stress is? You know the stress is here on ka, on this syllable. So we say vocabulary, vocabulary. We don't say vocabulary. We are not stressing here or we don't say vocabulary. We are not stressing that as well, but we are saying vocabulary, vocabulary. So this CA syllable is stressed syllable. So if you really want to neutralize your pronunciation, you also need to pay attention to syllable stress. And the best way of doing it is listening to the native English speakers, listening to people who are experts in their fields and who speak neutral English. If you listen to such people, you will naturally get it. You will naturally get the syllable stress. So it's vocabulary, vocabulary. Moving on to more words. So the next word that we have is pronunciation, pronunciation. So it's not pronunciation, it's not pronunciation also. So there is a s sound and there is a sh sound. And uh, if you can't distinguish the s and the sh sound, I should tell you that s is the danti s that we have in Hindi. And we say s, when we speak s, our tongue remains down and we say s, s, behind our lower teeth, that's where our tongue stays and we say s. But when we say sh in Hindi, we have a talabya sh. So what we do is we take our tongue up, we touch it on our upper palate and we say sh, sh, sh. So that's how you can always distinguish between the s and the sh. You can try it. If you find it difficult, just do it. You will be able to get the sounds. I just did it this morning with one of my students. So s and sh, s and sh. So for this word, Pronunciation. 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 That's how you pronounce it. Pronunciation. 
Next word is pronounce. Many students say pronunciate. It's not pronunciate. It's just pronounce. 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 Question. This one is question. It's not question. It's question. Question. What's that? It's question. Quest because it comes from quest. Question. So please practice question with me. Can you, can I ask you a question? Now the next word that I have is this. It is, I hope you can see these words. It is sentence, 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 sentence. The next one is punctuation, punctuation, punctuation. Yeah, and about this word, like Americans pronounce this word as sentence, but uh, since uh, we stress the T's mostly, so it's a sentence. And British pronounce this word as sentence, so you can pronounce sentence. This one is punctuation, 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 punk, k. Sometimes people miss the k sound here, and this is punctuation. It's not punctuation, it's punctuation, like punctual also, punctuation. So that's what it is. Next one, a very important word. Many people say fluent. I want to be fluent in English. It's, that's what it is, it's fluent. It's not fluent. Many people say, I want to be fluent. That's not correct. The correct word is fluent. I want to be fluent in English. Fluent, fluent. Not fluent, it's fluent. Now the next word that I have for you is, it's not fluency, certainly, it's fluency, fluency, fluency. So remember flu, fluency is the word. Now the next one is, many of my students pronounce it confidence. It's not confidence, certainly. What is it? It's confidence, con. Con, you remember the Hindi word con, but in English we don't have a ka sound, so we say ka. Confidence, confidence, confidence is the sound. Yeah, and you might think that uh, uh, how come the, uh, the native speakers always say ka, like they will not say confidence, they will say confidence. They can't say Calcutta, they will say Calcutta. You know that happens because they don't have a in their language like native English speakers do not have a k, they don't have a ch, they don't have a t, they don't have a p, they only have k, t, so they have a k sound, a t sound, a ch sound and a p sound. So they can't say, they can't say confidence, they will say confidence. So for them c makes k sound, c is k, so they will say confidence. Similarly, so if we want to neutralize, we can also apply that. This one, communication. So you can say communication, but you can also say k. You can also pronounce this as k, and you can say communication. Com, communication. Too many syllables. So com, you, ni, ke, shun. Communication, not communication. Communication skills? No. Communication skills. Communication skills. Communication skills are important, are very important to succeed. This one, many of my students pronounce it as personality, but it's not personality, it's personality. Personality. Now, again, I said per, I did not say per, I can say personality also, like uh, we, we say in India, but but native English speakers can't speak P because they don't know the word. So they can only speak P. We have P in Hindi also. So we don't have any difficulty in pronouncing it either. So we can say personality. Personality because T because they don't know the word T. They don't have T. So they have T and so do we. We also have a T so we can pronounce it. So personality. 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 And the next word here I have for you is, it's not development like most of you pronounce it. Most of my students pronounce it as development, but it is de 
So it is development. Yeah, it's funny that here it is D and here it is V, but that's how it is. Development. So the pronunciation is development. Development. Development is the pronunciation. So if we put the two of these words together, two of these words together, we talk about it in our classes at English Cafe. So it's personality development. Personality development. So it's not personality development, it's personality development. That's what it is. So these were some words related to English language learning that people generally mispronounce. So I thought I should discuss with you. And I hope you have uh, understood the correct pronunciation and you will practice and improve your pronunciation for the words that you mispronounce. Now, um, moving back and let me check if other people have joined us. Okay, so Nisha. Hi, Nisha and Navdeep. Navdeep says, nice job. Thank you so much, Navdeep, for joining us. Thank you so much, guys, for being on this session right now. And uh, there's one more, uh, one more sound which I would like to discuss with you people. Just a sec, guys. Okay, so now let us, uh, let us talk about another uh, sounds that people mispronounce and I'm going to talk to you about the words ending with L-O-G-Y. For example, many of us have been pronouncing biology or uh, maybe zoology but that's not how we pronounce these words. So what I'm going to tell you is that if a word ends with L-O-G-Y, you're going to pronounce it logy. So you will assume like it's L-U-G-Y and you're going to pronounce it logy. So B-I-O-L-O-G-Y, it's not biology, it's biology, biology. Again, we talked about syllable stress. The stress in this word is on the O syllable. And we say biology, biology. So that's what you say, biology, biology. Similarly, say cardiology, cardiology or zoology or geology. Like one of my friends is a geologist. So geology. Similarly, any other word that ends with an L-O-G-Y, like psychology. It's not psychology, not psychology, it's psychology, psychology. So what you see here is that the main stress is on O syllable. Psi and logy are not stressed. So psychology, psychology. So please practice all L-O-G-Y ending words, they sound a G, logy, and the O before it is becomes O. It it becomes O. So we don't say bio, it's by O. We say biology. So please take care of that and try to pronounce more such words. Like I just pronounced biology, cardiology, psychology, zoology, geology for you. You can pronounce and find out more such words and learn the pronunciation. The other uh, common mispronunciation is with the words ending in G-R-A-P-H-Y. G-R-A-P-H-Y does not sound graphy in English. It is graphy, 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 graphy. So, for example, it's not photography. It's photography, photography. Again, the O syllable is stressed here so can you repeat after me and say photography 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 that's what it is photography like geography or biography or autobiography so it's graphy g-r-a-p-h-y graphy not graphy it's graphy as in photography so you can think of more such words i just pronounced the words Photography, biography, geography, autobiography, 
for you. So please find out more such words and practice. So the last last syllable is graphy and the syllable just before that is aw, like photography. So there is photo, photo, but the art of taking photos is or the science of taking photos is photography, photography, photo, photography and photographer, photographer. So that's what it is. You're going to say photographer now onwards. You can practice with me right now and you can watch the video later and improve your pronunciation for at least these words that we discuss in this session today. And uh, you know guys, what I would like to tell, also like to tell you is that we have started a 14 days speaking challenge where we are asking you to utilize this lockdown period to work on your uh, English language skills, on your fluency, so that when you return to your workplace, you can already speak confidence, like speak English with confidence. So if you're interested in it, if you think that yes, you need to improve your English in this period, we are going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that you can do that within the next two weeks that you have with you. And if you really want to do that, please uh, uh, call our board line numbers and learn about this 14 day speaking challenge. And we would love to share all the details with you. So that was about the words ending in L-O-G-Y and G-R-A-P-H-Y. I'm just repeating L-O-G-Y sounds la G and G-R-A-P-H-Y sounds graphy and the O before that becomes O. So it's O graphy, O logy, like biology, photography, etc. So please practice more such, uh, uh, more such words. Now the next thing I'm going to discuss with you that I've written here is the J, the Z and the R sounds. So in English, there are these three sounds. In Hindi, we have just one that's J, like Jahaj, Jal, etc. But in English, we have the J sound, like Jug, J-U-G, Jug, or Joke, J-O-K-E, Joke. So there's a J, like Joker. So it's J, you know, the sound. The other one is a Z sound, as in Z, when we say Zoo. So here, it vibrates more when you pronounce this sound. And what you need to do is, you need to keep your tongue low. And you say, Z, like zoo, zip, zoom, or zigzag, or ZTV, or, uh, yeah, zoom, I said. And uh, zip, zomato, zomato, yeah, very popular, zomato. So it's not zomato. If you've been calling it zomato, let me tell you, it's zomato. You have to keep your tongue down, and if your uh, throat here vibrates, you say, Z, Z. Like zomato, like the zindagi. Zindagi is a very popular word in our uh, movies and songs. So, z. And the third sound is the r sound where you touch your tongue up, like you do with sh. So, you touch your tongue up and you say r. r. This sound is used in words like luxury, luxury, luxury. luxury luxury then we have pleasure pleasure j pleasure treasure measure garage genre so in all these words we are not using j we are not using z we are using j j many people know the two sound the j and the z sound but they don't produce the sound so in words I repeat in words like luxury you touch it up and you say j. luxury luxury pleasure treasure measure garage etc so that's how you can produce this sound please practice this sound after the after this video ends so that you can improve and you can learn so it's J. So we just discussed the J, the Z, and the R sounds. J as in Joker, Z as in Zoo, and J as in Luxury. Luxury, not Luxury. Luxury. Or 
measure r yeah so that's the sound so we i discussed two different sounds with you s sh and j z r if you have difficulty pronouncing please uh, uh, practice and if you need any help please let us know we'll be happy to help you one of my colleagues can call you and we can help you uh, pronounce this sound or you can write to your respective trainer on uh, the whatsapp group that you have or during the class you can discuss so we will will be able to help you there and uh, there's one more thing here that my colleague says i should discuss with you is that we are offering discounts on our online classes so if you are really interested right now you can avail really good discounts and join the online classes and we offer group classes as well as one to one classes so you can join either whatever suits you you can join online classes or the group classes and uh, yeah so that's what uh, you can do and uh, what you can do right now is you can practice these words with me and uh, improve your pronunciation just to say guys i can't understand what this is if you i can't understand what is this okay all right so now guys uh, before we wrap this session up today what i would like to talk to you about is that in english in english there are words from many many languages many different languages and uh, like from many european languages and even european languages also use the uh, the same script as english but the letters sound very different the pronunciation is different so what i'm going to discuss with you next before we wrap this session up today is 10 words in english that are taken from french and you will tell me what is the pronunciation for these words all right so let me discuss the words with you i've taken these words these words are uh, are used so commonly in english but they come from french language and uh, they are so common so i would like to discuss those words here with you can you tell me how you pronounce this word is it entrepreneur or entrepreneur what is it you can tell me and then let me tell you it's not entrepreneur or entrepreneur first of all this a is a so you say entre you don't say enter you say it's not enter enter it's on trip on trip we talked about syllables so here they are on tru so we have on tru pruner on tru pruner so the right pronunciation for this word is entrepreneur an entrepreneur is a person who starts a business entrepreneur do you know any entrepreneurs and do you know that world's most successful entrepreneurs are college dropouts so entrepreneur can you repeat after me it's entrepreneur so please don't pronounce it as entrepreneur now onwards it's entrepreneur that's what it is entrepreneur now moving on to the next word the next word that i have for you is what's this i hope you can read it okay so this word is cologne cologne the g is silent cologne cologne and what's a cologne if you don't know a cologne means a perfume a perfume especially with a really pleasant smell it's a liquid perfume so cologne 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 is a french word that's so commonly used in english speaking world cologne so g is silent cologne cologne is perfume next one this word do you know this word is deja vu deja vu deja vu so deja vu it again is a french word deja vu means the feeling that you might have seen this thing before or you might have done this thing before like when you meet somebody and you feel like oh i think i have seen this person before so that's that feeling is deja vu so you have a, the feeling of deja vu 
Do you ever have that? Like you meet someone and you feel like, oh, it looks like I've met this person before or the person looks familiar. So that feeling is deja vu. Do you ever have it? You can let me know. This one, I'm sure you know. But let me tell you, it's not depot. It's not depot. It's depot. You know the bus depot? Car depot, taxi depot. It's depot. The T is silent. Depot. And depot is again. Depot comes from Fran French. Depot. Not depot. Depot is the pronunciation. Next word that I have for you is this. Can you please pronounce it for me? Please twist your tongue and pronounce the word. Do you find it difficult? Do you think it's difficult to pronounce it? Okay, so this word is renaissance, 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 renaissance. Renaissance means uh, revival of something like renaissance of the Indian freedom struggle. So we started our Indian freedom struggle in 1857, but it died down. And then again in the 20th century, uh, early 20th century, it gained momentum again. So that was the renaissance for the Indian freedom movement. So it's renaissance, sans, that's what it is, renaissance. Please repeat after me. It's renaissance. That's what it is. Now I'm moving on to the next word. And this one is, can you tell me what this is? Here, yeah, you can twist your tongue, try to speak it. But this word is chauffeur. Here, yeah, it's so simple. It's chauffeur. Chauffeur is a French word, but as you know, it's used so commonly in India. Chauffeur means someone who drives particularly for a, for a really important person. So chauffeur means driver. Chauffeur means somebody who drives a car for a really important person. So it's chauffeur. Chauffeur is what it is. The next word that, oh, I'm not sure if it is French, but how do you pronounce this word? It's not chaos, certainly. It's chaos. What is it? It's chaos. Chaos is complete lack of order. Like when things are not in their order, uh, they are just anywhere, no particular order, not organized. So that's chaos. Chaos is the pronunciation. Oh, so Nisha says the words are helpful. Thank you so much for your feedback, Nisha. And uh, if uh, any of you guys, other people have any feedback, please, please share with me. Uh, also feedback to improve my workshops, our workshops for the next time. Now, moving on to the next word. What's that? This word is massacre, massacre, mass, massacre. Massacre, massacre means like killing innocent people brutally. Brutal killing of innocent people in large numbers is massacre, like all of us remember about the Jallianwala Bagh massacre that happened when General Dyer shot so many innocent people and killed them. So it was a massacre. Massacre. Massacres are not uncommon in human history. There have been many massacres in the past. So it's massacre. Next one is a French word, certainly. Can you tell me what it means? And can you tell me what is it? Is it rendezvous or what do you think it is? Okay, the pronunciation for this word is rendezvous. Rendezvous. It's woo. So it's not re, it's ra. So we say rendezvous. Rendezvous. Rendezvous means meeting someone, uh, especially secretly. Uh, with a prior uh, uh, prior uh, appointment, like if you fix a meeting with someone at a secret place, uh, not always secretly, but especially for secret meetings, but rendezvous means a meeting at a 
fixed time and place. So it's rendezvous, rendezvous, rendezvous is the pronunciation. And the next and the last French word I have for you is genre. It's not genre, it's genre. Je, I told you about the je sound of it right now, genre. So it's genre, 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 genre. So genre means the type of a literature, like the type of a movie or a book. So we have different genres of movies, like we have romance, we have thrillers, we have horrors. So all these are genres, different genres of movies. Literature has different genres, like there, is, there are thriller books, there are uh, motivational books, or um, uh, there are devotional books. So these are genres, different genres. So these were uh, some French words that are there in English and I discussed the pronunciation with you guys. I'm just going to quickly repeat all these words for you people one by one. This one, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. You can repeat after me and practice. And this one's cologne, cologne, cologne. That's what it is. Next one is deja vu, deja vu, deja vu. The feeling when you think that you've done that before, I've seen that person before, that's called deja vu. Do you ever have deja vu? This one, depot, 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 bus depot. This one, renaissance. Or you can say renaissance. Renaissance, renaissance, renaissance. That's what it is. Next one is chauffeur. Chauffeur, chauffeur. Chauffeur means driver. Chaos, chaos, chaos. Massacre, massacre, massacre. That's what it is. This one. Rendezvous, meeting, rendezvous, meeting. There, there, used, to be a, there used to be a TV show called Rendezvous with Simi Greval. You, you guys can watch that TV show to work on your English because she interviews the most famous people in the country and the world in English and uh, they have lovely conversations. So you can watch the show Rendezvous with Simi Greval to improve your English. Rendezvous is the word, rendezvous. The last one is genre. Genre, genre is the word, genre, that's what it is. So that's all, these are all the words that I have for you guys. Uh, Nisha Pathak, uh, what's that? Oh, Renaissance, yeah, I think you have mispronounced it. Please, please learn the pronunciation. Okay, hi Sanjeet, he says it will be very helpful for all. I can't scroll it any down, I can't scroll it. Okay, I'm trying to scroll for the comments, but uh, my page doesn't scroll. I think I need to get really more familiar with uh, Facebook. Yeah, th that's fine, that's fine. All right, guys, so these were the words. So I would quickly like to summarize what we discussed today and uh, then uh, before we wrap the session up. So we talked about the importance of neutralizing your pronunciation. And we also talked about the ways to neutralize the pronunciation. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, using all four skills in the language. We talked about following Cambridge Dictionary. We talked about syllable and syllable stress. And we talked about listening to the great speakers of the world. So uh, these were the things we talked about. And we also talked about the basic difference between Hindi and English, where we discussed that Hindi is a phonetic language, whereas English is a non-phonetic language. That's the reason we always need to look out for the pronunciation of a particular word. Whichever word we come across, we need to check its pronunciation so that we're sure that we're always speaking it correct. Okay, and uh, then guys, we talked about uh, the pronunciation for words ending with L-O-G-Y and words ending in G-R-A-P-H-Y. And we said that these words are pronounced like ology or ography, like biography or geography. Then we also talked about the pronunciation for the days of the week, for the months, the, the neutral pronunciation for the names of the continents, and uh, 
we talked about s sh sound and we also talked about j z and r sounds so um, you guys got to practice if you have problems with these sounds please practice and then we discussed the correct pronunciation for around uh, 10 words related to english language learning and then we also discussed pronunciation for certain french words that are used frequently in english so that's all we discussed in today's uh, session and before we wrap this up i would again like to tell you that if you want to work on your english language skills with us uh, we can certainly help you develop confidence develop fluency develop accuracy in english language uh, you can join our online course and we are throwing this 14 day challenge for you where you can actually improve your skills within the next 14 days during this lockdown uh, that's our promise to you if you're really interested you can call us on our borderline number and you know our borderline number is 8826262712 and uh, you can find us on google or uh, uh, facebook or you can go to our website and find more details about us so guys i really and sincerely hope that uh, you found this session useful whereas for us for each one of us to actually achieve a neutral pronunciation it is going to require a lot of efforts so please put in the efforts listen to neutral english speakers uh consume a lot of content in english which means read and listen uh, a lot in english you can also listen to english songs and uh, please follow the instructions that i gave you today during this session so that's all for this session guys we'll be back with another workshop thank you so much for joining us do share your feedback thank you